So today I'm going to show you how you can make your own custom pixel typography inside of Photoshop. Luckily, it's pretty simple and straightforward, so there's not a whole lot of things to remember. But with that being said, there is a couple variables that you can change in order to make it look how you're kind of thinking about it in your head. Or if you're not looking for anything specific and you're just trying to experiment, this is a good way to do that. So let's get into Photoshop. All right, so this video is going to be split into three parts. The first part being the actual tutorial where I'll be showing you exactly how they get to the effect that you're looking for and create your own custom pixel typography. For the second section of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can retain quality as well as manipulate the font. So that way, if you want to make it bigger, make it smaller, stretch it, whatever you want to do, you can retain quality. So that way you're not getting a lot of soft edges or pixelation. In the third and final part of this video, I'm going to showcase a bunch of different variables that you can change in order to try different looks or just come up with something different or just kind of experiment with things. So with that being said, let's get into the actual tutorial. I, so I have a document opened here in Photoshop. You can do this in any size that you want. It doesn't really matter. But the very first thing that you're going to do is make some type. So for me, I'm just going to go with the word pixel. Um, this was my default font for something that I was working on earlier, but you can choose whatever font you want. So for me, I'm going to go with my tried and true new Oz grotesque. After that, what you're going to do is you're going to right click on the font and then you're going to convert to a smart object. You will then open up that smart object, create a new layer, move that layer below your type and then put in a background that is the opposite of the color of the typography that you're using. Now I'm just going to make a quick recommendation that you keep your typography black or white so that way you can make the background black or white. That's just going to ensure that you have something that's really easy to select. So that way, if you want to make some adjustments later, like making it bigger, making it smaller, or, you know, putting it into Illustrator to vectorize it, you have a lot of options and it'll be really easy. All right, so once we do that, we're just going to save that and then we're going to go back to our main project. So once we have that, you know, we can center this, we can do whatever you want with it. You can make it bigger, smaller, you know, whatever you want. I'm just going to keep the same size that I had originally. But the first step that we're going to take is to go up to filter. Then we're going to go to pixelate and then mosaic. And really, this is going to be the driving force of this look. And you can mess with the cell size. You can make it however big or small that you want. Kind of depends on you know how uh, big you want the pixels to be so if you want it to be kind of big maybe you do it like this but maybe you want it to be a little bit smaller you know you want some more of the details you know you just got to make that choice for kind of what you're looking for so for right now i'm just going to go with 13 looks all right to me um, but if we zoom in here you can tell that it doesn't look very great it's very pixelated but the thing is if you wanted to make this bigger it's not going to look very great because it's not going to have a lot of the kind of sharp edges that we might be used to if we were, say, working with some actual typography. So it looks rasterized and low quality. And if you're looking for that, that's great. You could stop here, but I'm going to keep going and show you how you can make this look just a little bit better. So a quick option would be to use the threshold adjustment, which, as you can see, looks all right. You know, you have some options here to kind of incorporate what you want from the um, pixel typography, but I don't really like the look of it that much. So what I would recommend doing is going up to filter, filter gallery, and then using torn edges. I feel like the results are just a little bit better than it would be if you were using the threshold. Um, so that's just kind of what I like to do. Um, what you'll mainly be doing is messing with the uh, image balance to kind of incorporate the pixels that you want. Since there is a little bit of uh, gradation between white, black, and gray, there's going to be some options that you can choose from in the image balance. So if you want them to be a little bit thicker, you can go towards the right. If you want it to be a little bit thinner, you go towards the left. So as you can see, that kind of has some different looks. So maybe you really like this kind of scraggly look. And you know what? That's great. If that's what you want, you can have it. But maybe you want something that's a little bit thicker. Great. You can have that maybe somewhere in the middle. Go for it. But for now, I'm just going to leave it kind of in the middle. I'll leave the contrast in the middle because if you go one way or the other, you start introducing some noise and at least I don't really want that. So I'm not going to include it, but if you want to go right ahead. So anyways, we'll click OK. And at this point, the effect is pretty much done. As you can see here, we have our own pixel typography that we made from scratch. And obviously there's more things that we can do to make it our own. But at least for the kind of basis of the effect, this is how you get it. 
It's really simple and straightforward, but the good thing about it is it's very easy to adapt and change to make it your own. But before I move on to some examples and some variables that you can play around with, I wanted to make sure that whatever you do, you have a way to make sure that you're retaining as much quality as possible with this effect. So just to show you an example, let's say we really like this. This is exactly what we're looking for. But as you can see, if we go to kind of scale this up, it doesn't look exactly the same. So if you want to keep this exact look without having to mess around with any of the settings, there's a couple of things you could do. The first thing you could do is just to convert this to a smart object again, just to kind of lock everything in place. Um, but as you can see here, it's using the entire canvas, which, you know, if you're not really picky, you can do that. I just find that annoying because I like to be able to make adjustments around the actual bounding box of the typography, not, you know, have this great big giant box that you have to play around with. So one of the things that you could do, you could make a new layer go up to select and then we're going to go to color range select the black and then in this new layer we will just kind of draw in that and then we'll convert that to a smart object and now we can make that bigger and it should retain at least most of the quality it's not going to be as good as some of the other methods but just kind of a quick and easy way and even from here if you wanted to you could add on the uh, threshold option which will kind of make it a little bit more clean, make those edges a little bit um, sharper. So, you know, that's a quick option for you, but there's two other options for you. So you don't exactly have to do this way. So the next option is going to be a little bit more specific depending on the type that you come out with, because what I've done in the past is I've actually just taken out my uh, shape tool and then I will just go over everything again just so I, I have these kind of vector shapes that I can use. So if I change the color to this, I'm like, okay, you know, do that. We'll size it up correctly. Then I'll just make another shape, you know, I'll copy it. And then I'll basically just rebuild everything. But of course, that's kind of time consuming. And if you have something that's very detailed, that's probably going to be a lot more tedious than what you're looking for. But I just wanted to mention this just in case maybe you have something that's really simple. You know, you could easily do this and then you wouldn't have to worry about anything. But probably the best method that I would actually recommend doing is going into Illustrator in order to vectorize it. All right, so now I've moved into Illustrator, the size of the artboard, anything like that, it doesn't really matter. We're just going to be using Illustrator for one simple thing. So once you've dropped in your typography that you like, what we're going to do is going to, we're going to select it and then we're going to go to image trace. If this is on, you can go to window and then you'll find it right here. And then I should open up this window so you can do what you need to. I'm going to set it on preview. And as you can see, it's already started working. And from here, you can mess around with the settings in order to make it however you like. You know, maybe you really want those corners to be really sharp. So you'll just kind of bump that up. But maybe you want them to be a little bit more rounded. You know, you like this round kind of look. That's great. You know, obviously you can play around, but then once you have it at a point where you're happy with, you just click expand and then we're going to ungroup a few times, make sure that it's all ungrouped. But from there, you should be able to remove any of the white background. You know, double check here, make sure we got everything. But once you have the back background removed, you should be able to scale it up as much as you want. So we'll just continue to remove that. But as you can see, now we've vectorized it. So if we group that all together, we can scale it up as much as we want to and we're not going to lose any quality. So from here, we can just copy it, come back in here, we'll paste it as a shape layer. And now you have very nice, clean lines that you can, you know, scale up or, you know, distort however you want. And you're not going to have to worry about you know, ruining the quality that you've just made. So those are just three ways that you can retain quality. So that way, once you get the type the way that you like it, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, oh, well, now I got to make it bigger or it's not the right size. You have a lot of options in order to keep it at the highest quality that you want. Now that we've gone over that, let me show you some example of some variables that you can change in order to get some different looks. All right, so this is the first example that I want to show. I'm going to show it for a specific reason, and that's because one of the variables is size. Now, because I made this as small as it is in the way that I uh, set the mosaic setting, it created these really interesting shapes like the E here, how it kind of sticks out. Like there was no way that I was going to come up with that myself or the P here, how it kind of has like this indentation. 
I think that's really interesting and really cool. And because of the size that I made it, I was able to get that. If it wasn't at this size, I wouldn't be able to do that. Just to kind of prove my point, if I zoom out here, here's what this looks like if all I did was just size up the typography. So as you can see here, a variable as small as the size of the type can also play into the look that you get. And then of course, another variable they can play around with is the type that you're using. So for here, I used a more script font. And so that's gonna have a different look. And the cool thing is since we're starting with our own fonts that we're just kind of sourcing from our computer or from wherever you get your fonts from, you can combine fonts. So if you wanted to, you could, you know, maybe utilize the P here from the script font, but you wanted to use the rest of this sans serif typeface, you could combine them and now you have your own kind of unique looking pixel typography. And then of course you can always mess with the mosaic effect because you know, if you wanna make it bigger or smaller, you might get some different looks. So that's always an option to play around with because you know, maybe you wanna have some more detail just like this, but you know, maybe you really wanna go extreme with it and you don't want quite as much detail. You want it to look really pixelated. And those are two different looks starting with the same font. And so there's a lot of options that you can kind of play around with. And then of course, we can also play around with some different settings in the filter gallery. So if we open up the filter gallery here, gonna zoom out real quick. You know, like I said, you can play around with sworn edges with the image balance. That's kind of something that I already covered here. But even further than that, you could even try out some of these other settings. Like if we go to stamp, you know, maybe this isn't what you're looking for, but it is interesting. And depending on the settings that you've already made, you might be able to get something out of this that looks way better than this. Really, I just wanna make sure that you guys are experimenting and trying things out and coming up with something that is your own. But as you can see here, this has a completely different look than Torn Edges. Now, one of the things that I will bring up because I specifically found it is if you go to Photocopy, I put darkness all the way up and detail all the way down, you could kind of get this uh, very pixelated, almost um, architectural kind of look. Just in another example of how you can get some very drastically different looks, just making some tweaks to the settings here. But of course, you could try out any number of these and just see kind of what you get. So hopefully this tutorial has shown you a couple of ways in which you can kind of manipulate your typography in order to make your own custom pixel typography inside of Photoshop. And really I spent so much time in this tutorial focusing on all the variables because what I want you guys to do is to take this tutorial and do your own thing with it. I want you to get into Photoshop and make something that would even surprise me. Make your own discoveries. But if you guys make any sort of discoveries or you make something that's really cool using this tutorial, I would love to see it. So please send it to me on Instagram and share it with me. And of course, if you found this video helpful or entertaining in any way, I'd appreciate it if you would check out the rest of my channel and then consider subscribing. I hope to see you in the next video.